You know who it is. Jig the God. Hello, everyone. I'm Jig the God. And today, I will be giving you a walkthrough on a new editor developed by Code Knobs called Synthet. I had the pleasure to be a beta tester for it, and it's truly a great experience to see where it is today. Alexia Code Knobs has been a pleasure to assist. I will be showing you how to navigate around Synthet. Synthet is a standalone universal patch editor for various synths by Dave Smith Instruments, such as the Prophet 6, OB6, Mofo, and more. As we get into Synthet, we will see all the synths that it currently supports. Some of the things that we will go over are the welcome screen, project preferences, main layout, program manager, importing and exporting patches, and more. Okay, let's get started. When Synthet first opens, you're presented with the welcome screen. Here, you can start new project, open existing project, open a recent project you're working on. Since this is your first time using Synthet, press start new project. Your project preferences pop up. As you can see, it's laid out in two sections, synthesizers and controllers. Under the devices drop down are the list of synths that it currently supports. You select your synth. I'm using the Prophet 08, so I will select the Prophet 08 layout. Under ports, there's MIDI inputs on the left and MIDI outputs on the right, along with the MIDI channels. Select the MIDI interface you are using. I don't have USB on my Prophet 08, so I have to select my MIDI interface that I'm using to connect to my computer. I have a MIDI Sport Uno on the left. I will select MIDI Sport Uno. And on the right, MIDI Sport Uno. Synthet supports multiple instances of the editor to use with your other synths it supports. Depending on how your devices are MIDI will dictate how you set up your MIDI channels. If using a MIDI interface and MIDI through connection, you need to set the right channels in the synth and Synthet instances that corresponds with your setup. If using USB connection or connect synths via MIDI interface, but each to a separate MIDI port, use any and all settings when you set your MIDI channels. I only have the Prophet 08, so I'll leave as the MIDI channel as input any and one. After that, you press create. It will now open up to the main layout of your synth. We will now explore the overall layout of synth that. Top left corner, you have the menu bar. In the middle, it's the controls for the preset name, browsing programs on the device, and writing the programs to the device. On the right, there's the instance feature. This is one of the coolest features I've seen on the editor and was suggested for every editor. I will go into it in more detail about this later. Below, we see the layout of the synth. It can be different for each model as they have different controls and features. Usually all synth parameters are split into sections. As you can see, we have layers one and two, sequencer one and two. Inside those sections, you find groupings of parameters, such as oscillators, filters, VCA, etc. And you have the subpages for unison with the keyboard, modulators, and controllers. These are menu diving options that are easily accessible from the editor. To know if the project is set up properly, since their parameters will change when turning the encoder on the device. Looking at the oscillator section, you can see the parameters change as I turn the frequency encoder on my Prophet 08. There are several ways you can change parameters in the controller section. As I mentioned, you can change it by turning the encoder on your device. You can use your mouse to click and drag. You can double click to get a list of parameters to select. You can use the scroll wheel on your mouse. Also, if you need to achieve a precise value, you can press shift and click and drag up and down. The same way you can change parameters on a controller section is the same way you can control parameters on the sequencer section.
Synthet can work with two types of programs. There are programs stored on the device itself, and then there are programs stored on the computer that are accessible via the program manager. We will discuss the one stored on the device first. Be advised, after starting a new project, the device will switch to Bank 1, Program 1, and your Synth current state will be lost. Here, you can also rename the patch that is loaded in your Synth. Next, you can browse the patches on your device. By clicking here, it will show the list of patches that are loaded on your synth. Just click on the sound you want, and it will load up. Or if you're looking for a particular patch, you can search for it. And click on the one you want. If you open up Synthet and you don't see any of your patches from your synth, you can request them by clicking on the request button and clicking start. I will skip this step because I've already done it and it takes a little while to do, but it will then load all the patches into your editor. Now say you loaded a patch and you want to edit it. So I'm making some edits. You made all your changes to it, you can write it over the current patch with the same name, or you can rename it to something else and write over with that patch. So I'm going to change the name so I don't lose my patch. And just put a B behind it, and you press this button to write current program. Now that patch has replaced the one on the device. If you don't want to write it over the patch, you can go to File, Save, program as and save it to your computer or you can use the import feature which we will discuss later. We will now go to the program manager. Here you can store and catalog patches by names and tags. Open the program manager and it will be empty. We will import patches from different sources to the program manager. First, we will import patches by going to Programs and Import Programs. There are three ways to import patches. We will use the Load from File for an example. These are files stored in your computer. They will be added to the list. You can import a single patch or a bank of patches. I just imported a bank of patches. You can select one or multiple by pressing control and the mouse button. A grouping by pressing shift or all by pressing control A. With the ones you selected, you can assign one or many tags to those patches or create a new tag to assign them to. I'm going to create a new tag. Once that is set, press import. It will import the files. If it loads the file with the same name in the program manager, it will give you a warning message. The process is the same for the other two ways the banks are patches on your devices. Now that patches are imported, you can access them from the program manager. You can scroll through the sounds and double click on the one you want to load. You can do a search for a sound. You can search by tags you created and or assigned to your patches. One thing I like to do is use the alt down arrow while strolling through the patches. It allows me to load the patch without having to double click and I can use my other hand to play keys to audition the sound. It's a very useful feature.
you can edit the patch by pressing the pencil. You can rename it, change the tag if you want to, or assign it to a tag, or create a new tag. You can delete a patch by pressing the trash can icon. At the bottom is Add to Export. Highlight the patches you want to export and press Add to Export. The patches will be added to the export program list. If you want to export some patches from Program Manager to your synth or program bank files for distribution, you can use Export. When you go to export programs, you will see the files you add to your export list. So we'll add some files. I'll just choose a random add to export. Here you can rename and delete patch. And you can delete it by pressing here. Now it's empty. File bank one and two exports to your computer. Device bank one and two exports to your device and will overwrite patches that you currently have saved to your device. You can export up to 128 patches per bank. Similar to important patches, you can select one patch from the program manager to export. You can pick and choose patches you want to export or highlight a grouping you want to export. In the export list, you can pick the location you want the patches to go. If we go back to our program manager and say we wanted to go to location 18, click add to export. Once you have your patches ready to export, press export and file bank will create a bank of patches. Device bank is different than file bank export, so I will show you how it works. Select the device bank you want to export to. So we'll do one. It's going to retrieve all the programs from that bank. It'll take a little while to do. Speed this section up. Now click on the location you want to export a patch. And in program manager, choose the patch you want to export. So for here, we want to move that to it. Click Add to Export. So it's going to overwrite that location. And now we'll do a grouping. So everything that I have selected here, over here, it's going to fill in all these locations until it gets to city dock. So you click Add to Export. It will add the patch to the location. Now to save it to your device, press export. And now it's all saved to my device. Now, let us explore my favorite feature of Synthet, instances. Instances allow several patches to be created and accessed with quick sound design sculpting, editing, etc. You start with instance one, which will always open to the default program one of the synth device when a new program starts, unless you load a recent project. To create another instance, click the plus sign. Press activate. Now you can begin editing, design a new patch. I will select a new patch for instance two. Now you have a couple patches. If you click on the instance one, and activate, as you can see, city thought comes back up. And if you go back to instance two, battle prep comes back up. All the same sound and parameters that you left off with will still be there. You could create an infinite number of instances. If you need to delete an instance, click the X next to the plus sign. You could rename an instance.
if you want, you could save the project, close it and reopen it and all the instances you created will still be there. We will now go over controllers. This can be accessed in two different areas. When you create a new project or from the project preference under edit. Controllers are used for MIDI controllers with knobs and faders to map parameters from Synthet. I will use my sub 37 to show how this works. So in project preference, you set the input and outputs for your device. Next, right click on the parameter you want to control and click map. So I want to control the cutoff. It tells you to touch a knob on your MIDI controller. I will turn the cutoff knob. As you can see, it shows the information once it's connected. Press map. I can now control the cutoff frequency. I will map a few more knobs to parameters. Say you map the wrong knob to the wrong parameter, just right click and click unmap and then you can map it again. Controllers is useful for synths that don't have a lot of knobs like the Tetra or you want to control other functions with your MIDI controller. Thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure showing you how to use Synthet. Hope you really enjoy using it. You can purchase Synthet from CodeKnobs.com. The link is below. Please subscribe to my channel as I'll be uploading more tutorials and tips on other music production in the future.